Greetings and welcome back to room 303 AP English, our Roberts Lectures. We are now working with uh, Liesl Miller's Hope on uh, page 644. Uh, Miller, born in 1924, uh, still alive as of the, the uh, lecture I'm giving today, closing in on 100 years old, German-American poet, brilliant offering here, 1976, the poem uh, was published, Hope. Let's just read it together. It hovers in dark corners before the lights are turned on. It shakes sleep from its eyes and drops from mushroom grills. It explodes in the starry heads of dandelions turned sages. It sticks to the wings of green angels that sail from the tops of maples. It sprouts in each occluded eye of the many-eyed potato. It lives in each earthworm segment, surviving cruelty. It is the motion that runs from the eyes to the tail of a dog. It is the mouth that inflates the lungs of the child that has just been born. It is the singular joy we cannot destroy in ourselves, the argument that refutes death, the genius that invites the future, all we know of God. It is the serum which makes us swear not to betray one another. It is this poem trying to speak. Now, this is going to remind us just to jump to 3A really quickly of Emily Dickinson's Hope is the Thing with Feathers. You can find it at learnstrong.net or comments there. Notice the repetition of the word it as, of course, the pronoun, the antecedent being the title of the poem. Hope. What is it that this poem suggests about hope? I just want to turn to page 645 because Roberts, I think, does a fine job of just kind of introducing us to maybe how to read this poem. So I'm just going to enjoy the prose here. Hope, Roberts uh, says, demonstrates that poetry is inseparable from the life and living. We regularly hope for fine weather, good luck, happier times, love, successful academic and athletic performance money, or better friendships, successful and rewarding careers, and so on. But Mueller takes, on, uh, takes us on a new and unexpected trip. Her speaker reminds us that hope exists in common things around us when we have never even imagined it might be, such as the fluttering seeds, she calls them angels, of maple trees, the expanding lungs of a newborn baby, and, quote, the genius that invents the future, quote. Hope may even be found in the blind eyes of a potato, which when planted in lowly garden dirt, possesses an indomitable wish for growth. The poem makes these ordinary things extraordinary. Go back to our comments regarding uh, what Percy Bysshe Shelley said in defense of poetry, what great poets do, right? They make the simple, the ordinary, appear somehow brand new. Our study of To a Skylark, if I can take a look at that at learnstrong.net, makes that argument. The next time you hear the song of the bird, you'll think forever differently about that song of that bird once you've read that poem, right? That's what great art does. Mueller even leaves us with a speculative and unusual conclusion giving life to hope by stating that hope speaks simultaneously with poetry itself. All these connections, which Mueller naturally and easily creates for us, cause us to say yes, to agree that hope exists in every obscure and out-of-the-way part of existence. Like all good poetry, hope leads us into the thoughts that we have not only not considered, but that we have never even dreamed about. This is, a, a, I think, beautiful prose to talk about a beautiful poem. Let's now jump really quickly to a possible message or two. Obviously, hope is necessary for survival. Hope is possible even in the most simple and mundane kinds of activities. And obviously, that final line, Hope is uh, all about art, right? That's what art really is. Um, D.H. Lawrence said that writing a novel is in itself an act of hope, and I, and I think there's uh, an argument to be made that any work of art is in fact this. Notice the powerful at 2B, symbolism and the irony that's as well here, right? That is to say, the hope that hovers in dark corners. You want to be a good poet, you got to pay attention to the way you use your verbs, right? What a great verb, hovers before the lights are turned on. Hope envelopes and in, uh, it explodes in the starry heads of dandelions turned sages. This is, of course, going to immediately make us think about any number of romantic writers like Wordsworth, 
uh, and maybe my heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. The irony, of course, is this notion of all we can know of God is hope, which makes us think about the three cardinal Christian or St. Augustine virtues, that is to say faith, hope, and love, right? At 3A, what we've mentioned, obviously, Dickens, hope is the thing with feathers, and we've mentioned any number of other titles as well. At 3B, what is a time in your life when you had to have hope to survive? Can you remember that and maybe write about it? And finally, of all the virtues, that is to say, of the seven ones that we study in AP most closely, the Platonic virtues of, of course, wisdom, courage, discipline, temperance, and justice, the St. Augustine, the Augustinian virtues, the Pauline virtues of 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, and love. Of all of those seven virtues, do you think hope is the most important? Can you be a hopeless person, or is, in fact, your very waking in the morning an act of hope? Well, there you go. I hope you'll enjoy this poem even more, no pun intended, or maybe intended. Thank you.